Hello, everyone. Hope you had a good lunch. We are back. I think we're about ready. Uh, I'm here to introduce a new, what I call a system called Global Weather Notification. Um, it's not a weather product. <laughs> uh, so let's get into what it is. Um, set up here. There we go. So let's try to dive into what is Global Weather Notification. Um, here again, we're going to tie this back to Romeo demonstration display uh, we show here, we've seen before. So if you're a pilot and you have this in the cockpit, you're going to be able to see this whole picture of where you're flying, um, the convective weather ahead of you or around, where you can deviate if you need to. You'll have this whole picture. Um, but if you're, if you're flying without Romeo or without really much weather or any weather in the cockpit, you're going to be really limited to your onboard radar. Uh, so most likely 20 minute look ahead coverage. Uh, you will not see these storms farther out. You will not know where they are exactly or what the best routes may be to deviate. And you may not even know they're out there ahead of time until you can see them visually or on your onboard radar. Uh, so the global notification system, basically it's designed to look ahead for you. Um, the system tracking the flights that have been um, put into it, which could be any flight or all flights. And it's gonna be tracking the uh, flight for you. It's going to look ahead for whatever weather product it's been given. In this case, we're looking at uh, convection in the ocean and it's gonna look ahead. And then when it sees something that meets the criteria, it's gonna go ahead and create a message, uh, which would be down here at the bottom. You know, This is tailored for this particular flight where it's got the basic meta information of where it thinks you are, where you are, what your altitude is, where you're heading, and then a message. And in this case, it's just, it's just moderate convection ahead. Um, and then it has a position, and then it has the cloud top height at that position. So what it's, what it's determined here is that there's moderate convection, which in, in this case would be yellow or red ahead, where it is, and what the cloud top height is. So that's really feeding back into the cloud top height product and CDO product and that it's triggering off of. And basically this is all it's done is giving you a heads up message, you know, and this is designed to be able to be sent to the pilot um, that they could receive this message uh, via a few different possible methods. But uh, if they have no other weather information, this at least gives them something. It gives them a heads up about that convection. So the global weather notification system, uh, it's basically anticipating whether an aircraft will soon encounter or be in close proximity to adverse weather. That's pretty much basis of what it's doing. And to do that, it's gonna take your position, your aircraft position, look forward in time based on lots, your position, current position, your speed, your heading, calculate the weather ahead based on the weather grid it's been given or multiple weather grids it's been giving and, and basically come up with a severity level. And then, if that's high enough, it'll go ahead and create a message that can be sent to the cockpit. Um, the system does not run in the cockpit, it runs on the ground. Um, and that there's some reasons for that, but one of the biggest reasons for running it on the ground is we can process all the aircraft that we want. Um, we may not be able to send that message to all the aircraft, the pilot may not want that message, but we can process them all. We can process as many aircraft as we, we feel we want to or need to. Um, the, the notification message is simple text message, really. Um, it's designed to give that pilot a heads up. And it's not designed to give them the whole weather picture. It's not designed to tell them all the information that they need to know about that weather, but it's designed to at least let them know that it's there. Uh, and this allows the pilot to do what they normally do, which is seek out the information via their normal channels, or even if they have no other channels to get information and we'll show here in a little bit about turbulence. Even if we tell them there's turbulence up ahead, they may not need to do anything with that information. Uh, it could be they already know about the weather up ahead. They could be simple saying, okay, 
they could just ignore the message if they already know this uh, about the weather. So this does not see, this is not designed to replace anything that the pilot already has a uh, capability for receiving weather, using weather. It's not designed to replace any uh, communications with their AOC or air traffic control. It's only designed to let them know of something that they may or may not already know about. So we think this is sort of a novel system. Uh, it's kind of been developed at NCAR over many years. It started out as a way that we were doing demonstrations with our weather products and how we got them into the cockpits to um, use verification for our weather systems. Uh, and it became a way that we were tracking flights um, and the WIDIC program allowed us to really hash out this system into a fully functional real-time system that can work for almost any aircraft. So some details, you know, this is a simple schematic about how it's working. We've got um, past aircraft positions in the orange that we're using. They may or may not be five, who knows how many minutes old, depending on our source. Uh, the current time when the algorithm is running, and then we're looking forward in time by projecting that aircraft's position. These are the blue aircrafts here. These are projected positions that we are estimating. You know, the aircraft could do many things such as already be deviating or turning, but generally when we're using their information and their routes, we're very precise in, in predicting where they're gonna go. So then we have this blue shaded area and that's our, what we're called projection notification area. That's the area we're gonna use to look at the weather up ahead. Um, so let's move this schematic and put it on top of some weather. We've got basically the length of the, that shaded blue area, the notification area, we've got some widths, and these are all basically what we call um, parts of the system that we can tune the length, the width, the locations, the lead times, we can all tune that to any aircraft's particular needs. Um, we can change these parameters based on the domain the aircraft's flying in. Uh, for the US CONUS, we have a much smaller length um, and then in the oceanic area, when we're using it with convection, we have a much longer length look ahead period where obviously the, hopefully the flight's doing much less deviations and we can stay with a high probability of projecting their location. So again, here we're looking at turbulence. Um, in that box, we're gonna calculate the number of uh, light, moderate, severe turbulence ahead of them. And we're just gonna, if it breaks the thresholds of what we've, either the pilot has put in or the base system has for those thresholds, we're gonna create that notification. Let's look at the same schematic over Romeo. We're gonna calculate the starting with CDO. We're, that's our predictive um, weather product, not cloud top height. First, we use the convective diagnosis to see if there is enough convection or a likelihood of convection. And then we will calculate a message for them. And then if it's heavy, you know, if we have moderate or heavy convection, we'll also include the cloud top pipe as well. So the, the ways we can use multiple products at once. Um, the demonstration we've done to date with this system, uh, we've been working with FAA and we did a um, significant demonstration in their NIAC cockpit simulator using um, AOC, ATC, and uh, actual pilots in the simulator running the system getting them notifications and then letting, and then kind of watching to see what a pilot would do with that information. What more information would they need? What is their interactions? Do the interactions with ATC or AOC change? And the answer generally is yes, slightly. They're, they're, they're much more active in looking for more information about that weather that we've now told them about. Um, sometimes this, especially with turbulence, they may or may not, be able to see turbulence. And so this, this information could be new. They may not be able to see it with their onboard weather radar if it's not directly with convection. Um, we did a lot of validation of the system with the pilots and um, working on the message format, keeping it simple, trying to keep it and not replace any existing functionalities that a pilot already has. We're trying to make this system really a quick message. The pilot can get it get a notification, look at it and say, okay, move on. I admit, you know, there's not much else that we're trying to get them to do with it. That what they do with it is gonna be, oh, there's turbulence up ahead. Okay, let's just put the seatbelt sign on. That could be that simple. 
Uh, we also demonstrated the ability to get this information into the cockpit um, via some uh, data link, we, which in these days could include a lot of different possibilities for a data link. Um, large airlines, of course, are going to have in-flight communication systems that they may be able to use with the Wi-Fi and piggyback on that. Satellite data links, um, small aircraft likely can have cellular connectivity, um, and even more technology is coming out each day to get connectivity into the cockpit or onto a plane. Um, this again goes over our development phase. We, we started this system running with, with the GTG Nowcast product, turbulence product, um, and developing the method, the system, developing the notification text, how it should look. We ran the system in the US um, on turbulence, uh, basically showing that the system can work, that the system does work and it can be worked, run reliably. We had a second phase where we ran this over the ocean uh, with the Romeo products that I've shown here. Um, and then we've created a final documentation and a large software package that we think can be taken by some other party and used, used as is or developed into a more robust system where they could integrate, integrate it into something they already have. So for our development, we have, um, again, thank you for BCI, this, dem this uh, demonstration display. Simple text notification is front and center, or really there is nothing to see, but I have nothing to show you when the system is running until something comes up. And then we get this text mes message, basically. And there's lots of ways to show this, but it's basically just see the text message. Um, when they get this, they can click on it, and then the system would load the weather data that went into the message. So, you know, here we just have a text message saying light turbulence ahead. This doesn't tell you a lot, you know, you may already be experiencing light turbulence, but when you want to look at that weather information, you've got this notification message you can use and say, okay, show me, show me now. You know, if you have a display in the cockpit and you have connectivity, you can then look at the turbulence information that's gone into this, you know, and before that, you may not be looking at the turbulence because you're, you know, you're flying the plane. You get a message that says something's up ahead that gives your attention to look. And you, so you're saying, okay, where's this turbulence? Um, on the left, we have a vertical cross section. So we're looking up and down um, along this orange dotted line here on the right, which is the whole horizontal cross section, giving you a big broad information. Um, we've put where your, well, where we thought your projected location would be, which is the, uh, again, the, the, the box that we used. And here's the orange box here on the right. That's where we looked to say and generate that notification message. So here you're seeing a large swath of turbulence and on the right, it's not telling us much. There's not much to do about it. It's everywhere. Um, you look at the vertical cross section on the left here and you might say, wow, we're just above the turbulence and we're about to go right into it. But if, if I climb slightly, we might have a smoother ride. You know, so there's, there's, it's giving you enough information to say, well, maybe I'll look into changing altitude here just, just to have a smoother ride. Um, some verification we've done. Uh, so how do we verify a system that is just using a weather product? Well, we've compared the actual notification area versus the, our projected. So when you're running this in real time, you're predicting the aircraft's location for two different times. In, uh, in this graphic, you see the 803 and then at 818. Uh, so we compare your actual locations at those two times with our predictive locations and draw a second box. <laughs> And with these two boxes, we can compare the turbulence nowcast product that was in those two products or two boxes and say how accurate were we in predicting your location and giving you the information that was in those two predictive locations. Uh, so using turbulence here, this is um, a large comparison, uh, basically null to low, null and light to light, moderate to moderate. The green boxes here show us where we got the category of turbulence correct. So we're not looking at too much detail, but we're looking at, did we get the overall category for that message correct? And the green boxes are correct. Uh, the false positives are in gray on the top right. And you know, we see some of these, especially where um, you know, we predicted light, but it might've been null. You know, there's gonna be some over predictive nature, but what we consider um, slightly more problematic are false negatives, where we said there was a lower category than actually 
was in your actual flown route based on the weather product. Again, we're not comparing the actual weather product with your actual flight. We, we, you know, if we used in situ turbulence, we might be able to compare actual turbulence versus the predictive turbulence, but that's more for the weather products um, to do and verify their own product. Here, we're doing a system, and so we're looking at how well the system did. So some of these false negatives were the most severe um, was where we said no turbulence ahead, and there might have actually been, you know, a tiny bit of severe. So we see 38 um, points here. This doesn't tell us too much, but looking at the percentages does tell us quite a bit here. Um, we're seeing high accuracy, null to null, where the most counts will be, of course, and a very small 2% of that null to severe, where we had false negatives, or even null to moderate, null to light. These, these numbers actually are quite low when we look at the percentages. Uh, so here, it's hard to kind of visually show you this system that's running behind the scenes. So this is what I've come up with as the best way. We're tracking all the aircraft here, um, United uh, American Delta, that we're running with the Romeo system. So running this in real time, we were tracking or able to track all these flights. Um, and here we're showing you the demonstration of what the predictive box would be for each flight, which kind of gives you an idea. Most of these boxes show very little in them or nothing. These flights are got nowhere. And then here on the right, we're seeing a few flights that are headed directly into that convection. And even a couple on the bottom right that even our box is not quite big enough and is not yet predicting that they're gonna go into that convection. But when this system runs again on the next time step um, and with Romeo, it would run every 10 minutes. Each time that weather product updates, we run the system again. So every time the turbulence system or the turbulence product updates, we rerun your predictive location with where you will be in a few minutes. And then and with Romeo, every 10 minutes, we can run this system each time where you are, where we think you're gonna be and look ahead for it, that pilot and say, what, what's the weather up ahead? Um, these boxes, I think are 30 minutes um, look ahead. Uh, we did look at 45 minute look aheads as well with Romeo in the ocean, and we did see very good results, but getting less predictive uh, than the 30 minutes. And again, this ties back kind of the benefits uh, that we saw from Virginia Tech. The pilot can see approximately 15 to 20 minutes ahead with their onboard radar. Giving them an extra 10 minutes up to 30 minutes gives them a huge advantage in seeing the weather beforehand. But if they don't have the product in front of them in their tablet in the, in, in the cockpit, we can track the weather for them. And we just need to figure out how to get this message to the pilot. So some of the design features that I like to highlight, um, the system is designed for high update weather products and now cast and observed weather. We're not, we don't expect this to be running with forecast data. You, you know, pilots are looking at the forecast before they take off. They're gonna look at the turbulence for their route. They're gonna look at the sigmets and they're gonna look at the convection outlook. They're gonna know about some storms. But the question is, is while they're flying, what has changed? So that's when we're looking at now cast products, turbulence now cast, icing now cast, the oceanic convection products, or maybe volcanic ash. All these could be run simultaneously through the system. And it can be looking at all these weather now casts at the same time. Whereas if you're in the pilot, you might be flipping through these different weather products to, you know, or may not be looking or may not have available all of them. Um, so pilots that are currently have these weather products in the cockpit, maybe it can reduce the cockpit bandwidth um, to get those weather products in the cockpit obviously requires bandwidth. The more products you have, the higher resolution, the more high update rate those products have, all of that is taking bandwidth into the cockpit. And the more and more products, 10 minute update, five minute update, multiple products, this, this eats up into a lot of bandwidth into the cockpit. Well, what if we didn't have to do that? We had the tablet in a different mode where the tablet wasn't automatically loading that data until you asked for it. Well, how do you know to ask for it? Well, you could have a message that says, look, there's weather ahead. Why don't you look at it? And then the tablet loads all the weather data for you. Re large reduction in bandwidth to the cockpit, especially people that uh, pilots that don't have significant bandwidth to use. Um, so some, some airlines already have similar features that like this. You know, they may already have a weather app. They may already have a weather app that knows where they are. 
course, if it's their EFB tablet, they definitely knows where they are. And they may already be able to use that tablet to notify them of weather up ahead. It knows where they are. It's loading the weather all the time. It can do that. But what does this do? This runs on a ground system, which allows all the aircraft. So we're not limiting this down at all. It can run on any aircraft, basically. The AOC tie-in, we can run the systems through your dispatch and automatically get those messages so that they know what the pilot knows as well. Um, it allows us again, processing even more high resolution data. If, if you're using the tablet in the cockpit to track the weather for you, you might be looking at polygons, high, which are highly reduced in accuracy. Whereas the system on the ground has the full weather suite and with higher, higher resolution models these days, the bandwidth for those models and the products that are based off them are, are continuously gonna go up. Um, and then again, with pilots with no ability to view the weather products could still get a notice about weather um, before they see it out the cockpit window or before they even experience it. Um, and again, pilot may already know about something that we tell them about, but how, you know, ding, there's a message. Oh yeah, I already can see that storm on my radar. Just, just silence. You don't need to do any more action there. Um, some questions I get a lot about this. Uh, how will I get this into the cockpit? What's the message transmission method? How will you get me this message? That's the first question everyone wants to ask. There's lots of options for this and we aren't dictating how you get the message or any of that. The, some people, some pilots like the large airlines will have in-flight Wi-Fi. Some, maybe a small aircraft could use cellular technology on their phone. You could have a web page. Um, where you get on your phone, you register your flight, and you you leave that web page open on your phone, and then your phone just dings with a text message when you get and you just get that message, and that's all it really is designed to do is give you the notification. Um, next question I get a lot is why don't you tell me farther in advance? Why are you only looking thirty minutes ahead or fifteen minutes ahead in the conus? Uh, these are the current specs that we've been running the system with for our demonstration. They're not the only specs you could run. The farther out you look, the harder it is for the predictive system to be as accurate. You know, we hear, why not look two hours out? Well, two hours out, the weather's gonna be moving. It's the first thing I can say. And anything I predict based on current weather for two hours out may not be accurate by the time you get there. So looking out even, Farther than 45 minutes is gonna require a more predictive nature and advecting the weather that we currently have to match that time frame. So that's a lot harder and more convoluted system, but could be done. Um, then in the CONUS, we're looking 15, 20 minutes out. That gives you the ability to update this quickly. Every, every 15 minutes, we rerun the system for you. We're looking out 20 minutes, so we have good overlap coverage, but really, in the CONUS of the US, we're looking for those rapidly developing storms um, or rapidly developing turbulence that you, you know, when you did pre-flight or even now that you're flying, you don't know about, you know? There could be this small convective cell that's growing. You see the big line of, tur of uh, severe weather, you're trying to go around it, but there's a small storm that's growing directly underneath where you're flying that you don't see. That's what we're, that's what we're anticipating the system helps you with. The next question I get is, when I get too many messages, what, you know, I don't want the messages anymore, stop. <laughs> um, there's the possibility that you might get too, messages, too many messages, but the system would be designed to first only give you one message per category. So if it sees light turbulence up ahead in that first uh, situation we saw, it's not gonna tell you again about the light turbulence, it just told you. But if it then saw severe turbulence up ahead, it would give you a new message. So it's not gonna continuously say light turbulence, light turbulence, light turbulence. We figure, okay, you've got the heads up, that's enough. <laughs> um, the last thing is, what if you predict something that didn't happen? You know, this, this is weather products. But then again, this is a system that's using whatever weather product we have. Um, the system, the, our forecast, our, our system is not the weather product. So again, but getting, information to the cockpit can get feedback from the pilots about false positives that don't happen. That's a great way to get feedback as well. Um, and then the last point we have here today is, you know, NCARS developed this system, but we're not gonna 
try to implement the full system and run it for pilots and run it for industry. That's not what NCAR wants to do as a research institution. We, we, this has come out of a lot of our research that we've been doing for years. And we, and we in the FA think it's a great idea and a great system that could be useful for pilots. Um, but the question is, is, how do we get this system to people? And NCAR needs someone else to basically work with. Um, and a lot of the implementation specific details, such as what exactly is my severe th th threshold or moderate threshold, or I don't wanna see multiple categories. All these things can be tuned in the system for each different airline or each different user. If you're registering your own aircraft, you would be able to tune and say which types of messages you want for which types of weather. Um, each target airline aircraft could have different system pieces in there saying, that they only want to track this or that. Um, airlines could integrate, if they did system-wide, they could integrate it with their dispatch where the dispatch sees the messages as they're going out or even approves them or even sends them directly themselves. Um, and again, the projection window, we hear a lot of things too big, too, too small. These can be tuned as well if you have your own system. And I think that is all of my slides. So. I will now accept some questions. Any questions in the house or online? Jason, uh, your last question on this slide. <laughs> Who are the potential entities can it, uh, implement a system like this. What, what what is what do you think are they? Uh, well, we see the first type of people that could implement this system. Anyone already dealing with aviation weather data or providing aviation weather data would be a clear. This could augment systems that already exist. Um, I know a lot of airlines already have their display. They already have their in-house weather pieces. But what we're looking at here is how do we integrate something new into what you already have? Um, we're looking at weather providers. We're looking at people that are developing those displays as ways to augment what they're already doing. And some are already looking at these types of things where the pilot gets a notification. But generally, these are running already on the pilot's um, display instead of on the ground. And we think running it on the ground can provide significant advantages. Um, it could be that you could run this completely independent where you run it in the cloud. We could have a full cloud setup where the entire integration is through, uh, you know, web, web services. You know, you, you, want, you want notifications, you want to be told when there's weather up ahead, you just go to that web page, put in your flight information. Then the last detail is getting that message to you, um, which there are ways you could have a browser left open that could get you the message. You could have cellular connectivity. You could have other Wi-Fi methods. So, thanks, Aldrich. Any other questions? Huh? Okay. Thank you all. <laughs>